Epigenetic medicine um, has become a popular uh, term and a popular um, area to research over the past few years. Can you just describe what, what an epigenome is? Well, the genome encodes all the information that forms ourselves, our body, our cells. It's like a book and the epigenome is sort of like the bookmark. So not every cell needs all the information, so a liver cell needs a different set of information, different proteins different things than a skin cells, although they are in the genome, they are identically. So uh, the epigenome is sort of the sum of all the bookmarks in this book of life and how uh, specific parts of the genome are only read and also transferred to the next generation. So it's inherited from one generation to the next. The changes in the, in the epigenome can be inherited. It is for sure that it is inherited to the daughter cell generation, so we live if a liver cell divides, it has the genome, it could become a muscle cell, but it doesn't. Somehow it remembers that it is a liver cell. So that's inherited clearly. And the big question is also, can it be inherited to really our daughters and sons and granddaughters and grandsons? Most of the epigenetic information is erased, but now there's increasing evidence that some of it is also transferred, really inherited to the next generation. Um, and are there efforts to sequence the gene, uh, the epigenome? Yeah, there are big efforts. There's the International Human Epigenome Consortium that wants to do that on a very large scale. Because the epigenome is, has some plasticity, it responds to external signals like stress or nutrition or uh, chemicals. There is, uh, so the epigenomes may vary much more, much, much more than the genome you must do that on a very large scale to see whether you will really find some underlying common pattern because one person's epigenome might differ before and after breakfast. So you gotta do that on a very large scale and this is about to be done, yes.